On today's Maker Mashup quick tip, we're gonna be adjusting the flow compensation on our 3D printer. So we're pleased to announce we're bringing back the quick tip videos. They're all short, less than five minute videos that you can watch quickly on one particular focus topic. And today's topic is going to be adjusting the flow compensation on our 3D printer. Okay, so let's talk real quick why we want to adjust our flow compensation. So when you extrude filament out of your nozzle, you have a 0.4 nozzle, you may have a different size, but we're going to use 0.4 for our example. You have a 0.4 nozzle and the filament comes out of the nozzle and it lays it down on the print bed or on the 3D printed part. Now, if you measure that amount of filament that's coming out of there, you would expect it to be 0.4. Well, the way that it actually works is that due to the properties of the plastic and the temperatures of it heating up and cooling down, it doesn't end up at 0.4. A lot of times you'll see 0.45, 0 0.44, a lot of different numbers, but not that 0.4 that accurately represents the layer that you're trying to output out of your 3D printer nozzle. So if you're expecting to extrude a 0.4 millimeter width and it's a 0.44 millimeter width or some other wider width, what you have is overlap. So it's actually extruding too much filament. Now you've probably run into this before if you ended up trying to print a print in place part and you took it off the print bed and it stuck and it didn't uh, move around the way it was supposed to or you tried to make two 3D printed parts fit together and they wouldn't fit together. Most people try to correct this with horizontal expansion. The difference between horizontal expansion and flow compensation is that horizontal expansion is actually changing the size of your model. So if you go ahead and say, change the horizontal expansion to subtract, let's say 0.1 millimeter, it's actually making that model smaller by 0.1 millimeter. Now, if you adjust flow compensation, what's happening is you're laying out the proper amount of filament and that's gonna give you a more accurate part without changing your model. So you're gonna to wanna to use flow compensation if you want an accurate tolerant part. It's really easy to go ahead and get this set up, but you have to do it per filament because each filament has different properties for how it expands or how it contracts. So you'll wanna do this calibration for each filament. So with all that said, let's get to work. The first step is to go out to Thingiverse and get yourself one hollow calibration cube. And then we're gonna load that up in Cura. Inside Cura, we're going to go down and click Spiral Outer Contour, which is going to print the cube in face mode. Now let's go ahead and slice it and 3D print this cube. Once our print is done, we're going to take a set of calipers and measure just the top five or so layers of the top of the 3D print. And we want to make sure that we're in the middle. And you can see here, this one reads 0.41 and you're going to measure it all the way around. I got a 0.42. Uh, we'll measure this other side over here. We'll get a 0.42 and then we'll measure our last side and that one will be a 0.41. Once we write those values down, we're going to look in Cura here and see what our current setting is for our outer wall flow value. Once we have all our calculations, we're going to go to layerfuse.com and in the tools section, we're going to enter our current flow. And then we're also going to enter all the values that we had from measuring our calibration cube. And that's gonna give us a new flow value, which we're gonna replace in Cura. Then we're gonna slice with these new values and print a test cube. And then we're gonna go ahead and measure this cube. And you can see here, these values are coming up right at 0.40. Now, if your values aren't correct, you can go ahead and do this again and just repeat the same process that I showed you here. So you can see adjusting flow compensation is really a simple process, only takes an extra five minutes out of your day. But once you have it set for a particular filament, if you use that filament repeatedly, you can plug these values in every single time. And I recommend writing the values right on the roll. So that's gonna be it for this quick tip video. If you liked it, make sure you mash that like button and don't forget to share and subscribe so that way you don't miss one of our upcoming quick tip videos. So let me know down in the comments if you plan on using flow compensation on your 3D prints. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.